Hey guys, welcome to the home of the Naked Trooper. Today, me and my buddy Jimbo are going to talk about our Star Wars Geekdom and how we vacuum form from the home using what's available in the home. We're going to be making a Star Wars costume which is a combination of a snow trooper and a biker scout known as a snow scout. Now here we have a faceplate of a biker scout. Its final phase is made out of plaster, starts out as a clay skull, and the final product after making corrections and making sure that it's perfect, it turns into a plaster mold, which is what I use because it's cheap, and it works. Over here is another piece, same thing, you start out with clay, you build around it, sometimes people use integrate plastic into their molds. Final product again is plaster, and this is an arm piece for a snow trooper. Now we'll talk about the vacuum forming stage and what it is conceived of. Obviously, vacuum forming starts with a vacuum. Here we have a 6.0 horsepower drop vac as my main power source for the vacuum. Then I run a hose to the bottom of a homemade table, vacuum forming table using pegboard as my surface. People like to call it a platen, but as you can see, it's been well used. This is what will suck the air out to form the molds. My heat source, because I'm so ghetto, is my oven. There you go, set it about 350 to 375 degrees. This is where I will warm up my plastic to the proper depth to make my molds. This is high impact stein. Short abbreviation, we call it HIPS. It's one eighth inch thick to help for its integrity issues. But there's also another product that people like to use known as ABS. ABS is a high gloss material. You can buy it as a thinner product. It costs more and it does have a higher integrity level. Unfortunately, due to the fandom, the way this is used, both ABS and styrene don't give out, will give out eventually. So I prefer to stick to the styrene because it's cheaper and a lot of the fans can't afford the ABS product. ABS also has an issue where it holds moisture. Due to this fact, when you put it in the oven, there's a term called orange peel. What happens is the surface bubbles out and it actually has the texture of an orange, which makes it useless to use in the armor making. So I prefer not to use it. I take the sheet of styrene, screw it in between two metal frames, and then place it in the oven to heat up. Now we're getting ready to remove the plastic from the oven. As you can see, it's got a nice sag going to it. I now take it, lower it, open my mold, seal them in the edges. I have a button over here to hit down. On the count of three, two, one, you hit the button. There you have it. Now what to do? Since the snout has to be pushed in, I just rub my finger along the edges. At the same time, sort of burping the air out of the edge. Now I'm just taking it apart to get my mold out. My final product, because then it'll have to be cut out and trimmed. Plus, by getting it out of this, it cools off a little bit so I don't throw my hands. It's a fun process, it's time consuming, you need patience. And you got to be prepared to sweat because you will, considering your oven will be on for about eight hours to do a full set of armor. There's your finished pieces. Cool. All right, now that the piece has been molded, I'm going to cut it out for the rough cut. For finer detail later. Cut it out now while the plastic is still soft. Makes your life a little easier. Because once the stuff hardens, it gets to be even more tedious than it was before. As you can see, with a little elbow grease, it breaks right out. And no issues to the mold. One, two, final product, before and after, perfect.